Hello, my name is Matthew Bloom, and I'd like to talk to you just for a moment about something that we tried out at Scottsdale Community College this last fall and that we are continuing to uh, implement. Uh, it's, a it's a special new course format called Flex Express, uh, which in a sense gives students the ability to take classes either online or in person, depending on what best suits their needs over the course of a semester. So it's not exactly as rigid as a traditional uh, course or a hybrid course even, um, and while all the content is offered online, it's also um, available, you know, students have the opportunity to show up in class if they want. So um, just to give you a sense of where this all started, um, the backstory is that, you know, this comes out of years of, of experience dealing with, um, first of all, let's say instructors of online classes uh, wondering uh, what to do about their frustration when it comes to students who are frustrated themselves, uh, you know, who get into an online class, uh, they think at the beginning of the semester that they're going to do just fine, but then a few weeks in, uh, they realize after it's too late and they've committed uh, that the online format just isn't working for them in for some reason or another, I mean, because of their specific learning styles or whatever it may be. Um, and then at the same time, uh, you know, we also had instructors of traditional courses who have students that at some point in the semester have some sort of a life situation that happens, maybe their work schedule changes or um, whatever. There are all kinds of different things that can cause it to happen, but students sometimes just kind of disappear. And it's not because they're not capable of of producing the content or succeeding in the course otherwise, but a lot of times it has to do with some sort of a life happening. Um, and so these kind of general frustrations that instructors of both online and traditional courses um, were experiencing uh, kind of prompted the idea that what if we could, uh, rather than just a regular hybrid class, what if we were able to um, offer um, a flexible attendance course where all of the content is online so if the student wants to just complete everything online then they can just do it all from home but if they do uh, need or want the in-person face-to-face they could always drop into class uh, at any point in the semester and either begin attending regularly or just for a short period of time So basically what this has allowed, um, or what this has um, in some cases really helped with, is given those students, whether they're online students that need the extra face-to-face -face time, or they're uh, traditional students who are experiencing some sort of a life issue or whatever it may be, schedule change, um, it's taken that frustration and because uh, it's created a more flexible atmosphere from the traditional kind of rigid structure of whatever course format you had, um, students were able to kind of take charge of their own learning and um, they're better prepared to succeed because they have that flexibility. Now of course it's not perfect because at the same time you give them more flexibility you're giving them more responsibility and um, that is something that we'll talk about here briefly. Now when uh, the instructors, um, myself and uh, Albert Shank and Sirio Caligero here at Scottsdale Community College decided that uh, we would take this on, we were thinking about different uh, ways of approaching the actual design of the course, like how would we design the course policies, and we all kind of took s uh, slightly different approaches, but for the most part, uh, the main points are, number one, attendance is optional, um, because the classroom is, is a flipped classroom. Um, students that come to class uh, are still required to, you know, view recorded lectures or look at, you know, some sort of readings or content online beforehand, that way they come to class prepared to do the face-to-face -face interaction so that we can do the formal of assessments and and those kinds of things face to face so it is a, it is a flipped classroom model um, at least uh, and uh, it does require st all students to access the learning management system canvas at some point but as we kind of uh, started to uh, actually offer the classes and the semester progressed, we found that there were other benefits as well um, specifically in terms of certain types of efficiencies for example um, students uh, who need that face-to-face -face time um, get more of it they are uh, because they can show up to class there are fewer students in physical attendance because the ones who are more autonomous the more self-starting um, self-learning kind of uh, engaged students are maybe completing the course material online and they don't need as much of that face-to-face you know, um, instructor student interaction. And so the students that do benefit from that get a lot more of it. So their learning experience is, is definitely um, intensified as a result of that. And not only that, but uh, we also found, I mean, it says real estate here. We also found that uh, 
it's better it's easier to manage classrooms um, you know you can you can use classroom size uh, if you have a classroom that you know you typically you can fit a number of students in you have the opportunity with this to have students from different sections attending or not attending based on uh, what they want that week um, and then you also have uh, if in for example with the language classes the Spanish 101 and Italian 102 um, you had no longer the need for a language lab so opening up this flexibility a little bit not only was good for the students metacognitively in that it got them thinking about their own learning and taking more responsibility over their learning but it was also uh, kind of opening the door to different kinds of e efficiencies and cost effectiveness uh, you know on campus now another thing that that it kind of surprisingly revealed to us was that um, students have a completely different perception of their experience in the course when you give them this kind of open flexibility. Um, you know, again, you are empowering the students by relinquishing some of your power as an instructor, and we'll see later that that's not, you know, that some work should probably be done to improve that, but at the same time, we have to remember that students, you know, just like everyone else, uh, the experience that you're having in a given moment is sometimes somewhat flawed. You know, we don't always have like the, 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 the we, our sensors aren't perfect, let's say. And so when we're experiencing a moment, we may not really see what's there. Like when we look in the mirror or when we're experiencing something, we may see it as being better or maybe worse than, than what it actually is. So I want to just discuss a couple of elements of the student perception, the result from this uh, Flex Express with you. First of all, um, now this is a survey, these are results from a survey monkey that I sent out about three quarters of the way through my semester um, last fall. And, you know, this is a very, it was a low stakes thing. They didn't, they just got a little bit of extra credit for, for doing it and they didn't have to, um, you know, they didn't have to respond, but I did get some interesting responses, one of which is this first one here, which is what would you suggest the instructor do to improve your experience? Well, the first thing, uh, you know, one of the first responses that I got was give online students the same amount of work that is given to in-class students. Now, what I think is interesting about that is that in-class students and online students in this Flex Express format are literally doing the exact same things. They're just doing it in slightly different ways. So students who do it online, however, um, have to do any kind of class discussion, any kind of little activity, practice exercise, all of that stuff has to be completed through Canvas. And it can be in one week up to like maybe 10 minor activities, you know, they, they don't take a really long period of time to do, but a lot of different formative assessments and, and things like that. So the perception that some students had was uh, that when they show up to class, they do less work, even though they're demonstrating their uh, familiarity uh, with, uh, you know, the exact same content that the students doing it online are. They're doing the same things, it's just the discussions are verbal in class, and they can't escape the discussions because there are fewer students that attend, and so it's a much more intimate atmosphere. So one thing had to do with this perception with the amount of work that the students are doing. Another um, had to do with this idea of, of self-perception. So what do the students think about their own ability to learn, their own progress? And here we have, for example, what about the courses most appealing to you? Um, I, and this student ironically left out the most important word in the sentence where the arrow is right there. But I like that you can do all the work online. Having this flexibility is extremely, I'm guessing, good because I work on Monday, Wednesday nights. Um, so obviously, you know, appreciating the fact that there is that flexibility there. However, it does say I also like that we have online discussions even if you don't go to class. So, you know, the student is thinking about how the flexibility is a benefit, but then also um, what that additional flexibility uh, uh, lends to the learning experience that they're having. The next thing on this uh, same actual survey response that I would point out is the next um, answer here, which is what aspects are the most challenging. And this is not, uh, the question is asking what aspects of the course are most challenging, but the student response really is more about what the student needs to work on. And so it is um, obliging the student to engage in that metacognitive reflection. Like for example, this says, I find the essays to be the most challenging because I am not the strongest writer. I also find doing it online sometimes challenging because I tend to wait until the last minute. Now those are very typical responses, but at the same time, um, it does demonstrate that giving students this additional flexibility and communicating that additional responsibility to them is forcing them to um, at least know that they're res more responsible for their own learning and taking charge of that in some way or another.
Now let's look at some data here about student success and retention. In this uh, particular slide here, we see the results from the uh, the one section of Spanish 01 uh, in the fall of 2014 and the one section of Italian 201. And you can see here that these are really pretty good. These are on par with any, in fact, a little bit better sometimes than any traditional uh, you know, in-class or hybrid course would be. So these are really good success percentages here compared with uh, traditional um, or I should say across the district averages um, and what we can see here is that there's it's kind of like students do what they think they need to do in this Italian course for example there wasn't a whole lot of shifting from online to in-person students kind of just decided at the beginning of the semester what they thought would be best and then they did it and it was just a few people that usually showed up and the other students um, just did it online and it wasn't a big deal in the Spanish course we had a very interesting shifting going on where you had um, two uh, to three students whose success in the course was directly linked to their ability to jump to basically shift from online to in-person when they found that the online wasn't working or in-person to online when there was a work issue that forced them to make that transition. So these are really good numbers here and it really does show that there is the potential for quality here and, and, and really um, kind of helping out the learning experience for the students. Now English 101 was the, these are the, I actually taught four sections of English 101 in the Flex Express format all at the same time. Um, it, it was a, a Quality Matters certified uh, course, so it is, you know, it's been, it's been decided by a third party, uh, you know, that it's, that it's credible enough as a course uh, to be online and so that the quality learning is actually possible. Um, I generally, um, you know, find that English 101 is obviously a different kind of class than an elective language course because you have pretty much every student has to take it and nobody really wants to. But having said that, um, you know, I found that my uh, experience here was that um, and go back here. Uh, my experience was that you know I had about 59% success, successful passing rate uh, in the four concurrent sections of Flex Express English 101, which at first looks pretty terrible because if you look at hybrid, in person, and online, I mean it's basically on par with an av like your regular online class. And so th these are district averages, and these are not just English 101 averages either. So at first I was kind of concerned about that, but when I thought, well, let me compare it to myself. You know, this is virtually the exact same course that I have been giving to. Uh, English 101 online f uh, for the last two years. So what I did was I looked at, for example, last fall when I had a couple of uh, sections of the course online, the exact same course, and I do see there to be a very significant, um, or at least relatively significant, 3% increase in student success. And I can tell you anecdotally that um, there are a number of students that I had that were able to succeed for the exact same reasons as you saw in Spanish uh, 101, which is that the students at the last minute were able to kind of, not at the last minute necessarily, but sometimes halfway through the semester or a few weeks in when they saw that their performance was shifting and I kind of sent them an email or something along those lines, then they got the sense that it was a good idea for them to move one way or the other. And I also had some students that because of work situations or some people were moving and things like that, that they were able to, um, you know, start taking the class online, complete the coursework like that without completely failing just because they weren't able to get to campus anymore. So it does have the potential at least to be a uh, significant alternative to an online only class, if not with some improvement, an, uh, an, an alternative to a traditional course. Um, and what we learned though was of course course that you don't want to give your teenage uh, your teenager the car keys and no curfew at the same time because if you give them too much responsibility all at once that they're not prepared for you might not see them for a few weeks if at all so um, it, it, there's this sense that you know you do still have to have that instructor intervention and you do need to make sure that that uh, your students know that there are still requirements that the the course requirements are not optional and um, but what this does it, what this does is that it forces students to take that additional responsibility which although that's not uh, explicitly in any of the course competencies that you should learn how to take college courses or learn how to be responsible in college that is still a skill that we are um, imparting onto, onto our students and so it is it is helpful uh, to get them engaged in that um, early so finally, um, you know, the reason why I've created this video, we decided that this is, uh, this is something we want to share. So I encourage you to, uh, you know, contact me. My email's in the, um, uh, you can leave a comment here if you want, or the email is uh, also going to be in the uh, comments section or the description of the video. And so I encourage you to contact uh, me if you have any questions and uh, feel free to put this idea to the test. Thanks for your time.